Norton gets the kick away. A tough one to field. A good roll. As far as Houston's concerned, across the field, a dandy kick down inside the 40-yard line. Down to the 37, and Norton sets the charge of back at a respectable distance. Remember, he was kicking from his end zone, and he kicked down to the 37-yard line. George bought a punt and a big play in this game. Good punt. He was helped quite a bit by the roll. I guess the ball rolled to 15 yards or so there at the end. The Houston Oilers are really down there under it, though. They were making sure that there would be no run back at that punt. They got downfield very quickly. A lot of pressure on Jackie Kemp and the San Diego Chargers now. Only two minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the game. They trail by seven points. First and 10 to go for the Chargers from their own 37. They've got a long way to go to score. Kemp is in trouble. Gets out of trouble. Hodgson can't get him. And he throws down the middle. Complete to Charlie Flowers at the 45-yard line for a gain of about eight yards. Jackie Kemp with some great magic. And now San Diego calls, uh, let's see, the official's timeout for the two-minute warning. A timeout down on the playing field. And the score here at Balboa Stadium is Houston 10 and San Diego 3. 45, it's second down and 3. And a pitch to Bo Roberson going wide. Trying to cut back now, reverses his field. He needs a couple of blocks. He cuts back inside. And he gets the first down at midfield with 1.45 left. There for a while on this side of the field, it appeared that Ro Roberson might have some clear sailing if he could get a couple of key blocks. But Ron Potkin, number 37, the linebacker, was plugging the gap and caused him to turn back inside. San Diego's called timeout right here, by the way. And Jim Norton made the tackle on Roberson, who, if he gets away, will not be caught, I guarantee you. 1.45 left in the game. Houston leading by seven points, and we are set for a rousing finish, George Raderman. Well, San Diego is using up all their timeouts here, though, by uh, having to call timeout after the last two plays. Now, Jackie Kemp is over on the sidelines talking to Sid Gilman. They very likely may come out and call two plays in the huddle so that they can line up very quickly. If he completes a pass or if they make a substantial gain on a running play, they won't have to waste time in the huddle. They can come right back and line up and run the second play. I don't know whether they will do that or not, but it's a good guess right here. Torpedo. Right to the right. Norton splits left. Roberson and Powers in the backfield with Kemp. Blocking for Kemp. Who is looking. Jumps, leaps, throws, launches, and turns. Incomplete. A flag is down. Interference is called. Interference is called. Jim Norton was battling Dave Kasurik. That carries an automatic first down with it. In addition, there was enough yardage involved to make it a first down. Now they only have to go 37 yards. And they have a minute and 38 seconds left in which to do it. The tension mounts. The crowd comes to life again. Trying to root their chargers on. Carpino to the right again. Kemp back to throw. Stays in the pocket. Throws. And it is intercepted. Intercepted on a brilliant play by the little guy, Julian Spence, who all afternoon had been battling Dave Kosurek and losing in the battle. But now the little fellow latches onto the pigskin with only a minute and 32 seconds left. And as you saw, he was being mobbed along the sideline by his teammates. The little guy stayed with the job, George. He's replacing Freddie Glick in the backfield. Lick out with an injury. We'll get your comment on the situation in just a moment. Right now, the Oilers trying to eat up the time. 119 left. Landa gives to Cannon. Cannon cuts inside at the 30. Right to the line of scrimmage, and he stops. Well, there's the story of perseverance, George. Here is Spence replacing Glick, battling the big fella, Kusurik. He's outweighed by uh, almost 100 pounds, and he's being whipped all afternoon, and suddenly he comes up with the biggest play of the day. Well, he's done a fine job. He's taken a bit of a beating back there because on the passes that Kasurik has caught, he's had to tackle him. And as you say, there's about 100 pounds difference in weight between the two. So Spence has hung in there gamely all day and finally came up with what is perhaps the key play in this ball game by intercepting that last pass of Jackie Kemp. Only 38 seconds remaining in the game. Houston has the ball in their own 31. Second and 10. 
point. San Diego trying to get that ball. I give to Charlie Toller hanging on that ball for dear life. Gets a couple of yards. Clock run. 23 seconds left. I do not believe San Diego can call a timeout. They have no more timeouts allowed. 14 seconds remaining. Clock is still running. 11 10, and it looks like Houston is going to be it. And now, uh, let me see. A timeout down on the field. San Diego did have one more timeout remaining. One of these next year. Mainly for your entertainment. Here's a quarterback sneak by George Blanda. One of the few times you see him carry the ball. That starts the clock again. Three seconds left. Two seconds left. One. And now the ball game is over. And Houston has won it for the second year in a row. The final score is Houston 10 and San Diego 3. On behalf of George Radovan, Bob Neal.